Get witchcraft. I said, what? Huh? <laughs> he said, get rid of witchcraft. That's why you're here today. Amen. Amen. That's why God has blessed us with the man of the hour. He's tired of the man When you say apostle, you better come with some power. You better come with some authority to get the work done that God has assigned for you to do. We heard the Lord, and you know what? God is so good. Isn't he awesome? He will tear a wall down. And then he in the church of Jesus Christ. It's not my word. It's not my husband's word. But in Micah 5.12, he said, I will destroy your witchcraft. I'll take it out of the midst of you. I'll stop you from doing incantations, curses, and spells, and I'll destroy your wizards and your sorcerers. said, Joshua got what? Instructions from the angel. Should I go up or should I not? And he was told how to move, what to do, and how to do it. And that's where we are. We're intercessors from a long time ago. Prophetic intercessors, you know, you move as intercession, God moves you into the prophetic, he moves you into the anointing, and here we are. I guess this is what he put us in ministry for all these years to get to this place. Who to thunk? You know, both of us are retirement age. You hear what I'm saying? We should be like, rusty. <laughs> On our laurels. God said, I'm it's time for work. Even more work than I've ever done before. So I bless God for the energy and the strength. I'll be 72 on my next birthday. whole ministry life. Everywhere I went, there were witches trying to destroy me, trying to destroy the church. And God just used me, you know, to cast it out. So here we are now with a full-fledged ministry to cast it out of the church. Amen. Amen. Out of the church of Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I said? I'm glad you're here. Okay, thanks for coming. I just need to put a little bow around this real quick. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We have witches that have been writing to us and say, what do you use, a stake in their heart? What, what? And, then, and they get all their Hollywood stuff out and they're like, what, what are you doing? You know, do you use an arrow dipped in something? I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. But we uh, wrestle in the spirit realm. And our God is mighty. And like you said, show me your God. Let's see who can burn down. So now, now, don't just do the, the sacrifice. Let's pour water on it. Let's make it impossible. Let's, let's fill water all over the trench. It's, if it's not impossible, I can be God. God can do the little things, and He wants to do the big things. The fire came down from heaven, and they did lose a lot of prophets that day. <laughs> Praise God. We, we're here because God can save people involved in witchcraft. 
can say people that have been involved in drugs and sex and addictions and all kinds of crazy living. Praise God. And he's here to love you and to get you free. He wants to save us to the uttermost. Yes, I do. We have with us Apostle John Ramirez.
You can hoop and holler all you want. Come on, sir, preach. And still come up empty. So you can be sitting in the presence of a lost of God. We need to come to a place that the devil's playing for keeps and the church is preaching new age. Like my brother said, we don't preach the blood anymore. We don't deal with the blood anymore. All we do is sing and dance. The devil couldn't do that too. Come on, come on, come on. They speak in tongues and the devil speak in demonic tongues. We, they can do that too. They fall backwards, y'all fall backwards, and in the witchcraft church, we did that too. Say that, say that. I like said, what is the difference between you and me? Come on. What is the difference between you and I when I came to the church? What is the difference? We did that. We did that. We did that. Matter of fact, our church was longer than yours. Our church started at 7 in the evening, and we were done at 5 in the morning. I know it's your church. <laughs> Two hours and people already yawning. Yeah. Then you ain't ready for heaven. But God don't want you there. God don't want a bunch of yawners in heaven. Because you'll be bored. You'll be bored here, you'll be bored there. So you're going to hell. Guaranteed. I promise you that. Send me a postcard when you get there. Come on, sir. Call me Colette. All right. <laughs> if you're yawning, when you fall asleep in church, you know what that tells me? You got no prayer closet at home. You're just, a, you're, just a, you're just a fake Christian. You got no substance. It's like the Spanish church. They're, 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 I think the Spanish church is like the Flintstone. You can't wear makeup. You can't do this because they want you. Ugly doesn't make you holy. It's, it, it, it's, like, it, it's, like, it's like the black church. Let's get there too. Everybody's a bishop. You got three cats and you're a bishop. Show for. He, he, this is a donkey that no one knew who he was. They, he, 
Dr. Duncan even have a name. But when, when Jesus said, Luso, that means deliverance. I got need of him. And when they brought the donkey and Jesus, the King of Kings, the glory, the, 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 the Shekinah glory, the one, the one, the one, the seal of the universe. Sound! The donkey have recognition. Yes. There you go. Come on. Because there's something when Jesus sit on you. And he rests upon you. And he can lean on you. Something happens. I ain't touch church. Come on. I ain't touch religion. The church is medicated. Yes. Institutional medicated on the gifts, but not the presence. And by a junkie, Fifth, I got 15 gifts. You know that? I don't care. What you got? I, I would just want to know if you touched them. Have you touched them? I don't, care how, I don't care how much you speak in tongues. Right. Don't mean nothing. The devil speaks in tongues. I don't care how many scripture you know. The devil knows scripture too. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. And I'm talking about the modern tongues. Yes, sir. So I got nothing to live for. 1999, I went to hell. Left my body, came back. Hell is a real place. It's the absence of God. Amen. And in March 11, 2019, I died. And the only reason God put me back in my body, I was leaving my body, and the heaven was opened up, and the light was beaming, and the reason God put me in my body, when I left, I saw my body there, I was in my living room, I came from teaching somewhere, and I, I said, I'm going to take a nap, and I'm going to read my Bible, I'm going to go jogging, and that's my therapy, running, I love running, and I left my body, and I saw my body there, and I wasn't even missing my daughter, and I'm the only smart Puerto Rican, I only got one kid. <laughs> <laughs> True. I was in the midst of my daughter. I had such a peace when I was leaving my body. And it's a, it wasn't even astral projecting either because you know what? I know the difference between one and the other. When you astral project, you when you come back into your body, your spirit feels filthy. Yes. It feels heavy. Yes. It feels contaminated. Because I did so much astral projecting, trust me, I went around the world back a couple of times. Because it's a contract with a demon. And you have to have you have to have high rank powers to astral project. Yes. And you know, I I I, I tell you, I, I say I I I am even challenged which is your astral, but I give you my address, I'll help you out. Because I know how to knock you from that place with the power of God. You might not go back into your body. And, that, and, and that's Christianity. It's called spiritual warfare. Yeah. I would hit you so hard like a piñata in a Mexican party. You never go back to you never go back into your body. You ask your project. <laughs> Believe me. I will cut the I will cut the civil court, which is the contract with you knew the demon. Now separate one for another. And then I can't bring you, and you won't come back because I confuse your languages. And I'll change your languages. And then you can't communicate. You can't find yourself back to the body. And people say, well, John, ain't you a Christian? No, that's spiritual warfare. I'm not a Christian at that moment. Now, if you want me to be a Christian, then I can be one if you want me to lead you into the sinner's prayer. Yes. Wow. It, 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 is, it is a place. I was telling my brother here, he, he has an amazing ministry. I was telling my brother here, we, we need, well, I was telling my brother, the armies of David, God is looking for. Yeah. The armies, see, yeah. Moses' generation died in the desert. Right. Yeah. God is not looking for that church that died in the desert. Right. God is looking for that generation of Joshua church that will rise up. And we'll rise up. Yes. We'll rise up. We'll the come. You see, that's why that's why God had to save Kanye West. Yes. And Chris is a saint. Is he saved? Well, are you are you saved? <laughs> see, I can relate to that because when I got saved, people were saying the same thing about me. Amen. You know what he said, that demon boy? <laughs> 
<laughs> you saw that demon boy say, so he's not a double agent, he doesn't want to try putting a booty 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 in the church on us? <laughs> Two years before they took me out to get some chicken. <laughs> Two years! And these are supposed to be the anointed ones. No, the, 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 the gifted ones. The ones that are supposed to have the sermon. Oh. See, I know Kanye's saved, but I know Snoop Dogg is faking it. Because I got this hurt, I got this hurt. In the last days, man, if you don't get your spiritual vision right, the devil will live in your house. Right now. He will come up, he will, he will come up as himself like an angel of light, and you be talking to him all day long, every day, and you think it's the Holy Spirit. Are we good? <laughs> See, God has a plan for you, but the devil has a plot. Yes. Right. All right, now. Which one you living on? Lord have mercy. Which one you living on? Which one you tapped into? A God's plan or the devil's plot? Right. See, church talks about the devil all day long. You hear him on TV. Oh, the devil. Oh, and the devil did. Oh, and all this other crap. <laughs> And I had a fight with the devil. And I had this and that. All that crap talking. But no one is confronting the devil. Right. That's why people come to church sick, medicated. You know, pharma, you know, all this pharma kid stuff. All these pills and all these pills. All these, all these pills and stuff like that. I take 15 pills a day, you know. My mama had cancer. My cousin got cancer. My auntie got cancer. Now I got cancer. I, I'm on full stage. And what are you doing? What are you doing about it? Cast that devil out. The faith is not strong enough. Your faith is not strong enough. Your anointing is not strong enough. Amen. Because it's based on faith. How strong is your faith? Is how strong your anointing? Because the currency of heaven is faith. Right. Amen. I believe him that he can cast that devil out of you. Amen. Not me. Because we both need him. That's right. We both need him. But I believe that I tap into heaven and that we can cast that devil out. Amen. 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 I was up in Queens. Not too long ago, two or three years ago, and this lady come up to the altar, and she says to me, I said, you want prayer? She said, yeah. And she said, yeah, I want prayer. I said, you're Christian? First thing I asked everyone, are you Christian? Are you lukewarm? Are you a chicken coop Christian? Which one are you? There's <laughs> <laughs> very few evils in the church that says. <laughs> Which one are you? Because I'm not going to cast out no devils on any but unbelievers. That's right. That's right. And then suddenly come back and you blame my ministry yeah. for your mess. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to walk in Jesus Christ yeah. and you want to accept him, then we can deal with the devil and we can close that door. It's up to you. But don't come over here and use Jesus like a flat, like a spare tire because you're not a flat. All right. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. On. You take that devil home, you take him with you, pull him in the car, yeah. and you come back when you're ready. When you're ready, you bring him again. We'll deal with her. She said to me, now I'm a Muslim. And I said, well, what have your God done for you lately? She said, nothing. I got six months to live. And I'm going to die. And the doctor said, go home and make peace with your family. Because we can't do for you anymore. I said, well, my Jesus can do for you. Save you. Salvation first. Because you got to come into the front door. You can't sneak in. Okay? And then God can heal you. And she said, give me that. I said, well, let's renounce. Let's renounce the Quran. Let's, let's, let's renounce Muhammad. Whoever that person is. Child molester. I told him in London, I was in a fray. Told him in London, I, had, I got bad news for you. Jesus is here to stay. You can't push out something that's omnipresent. You might be delusional or you might be stupid. I prayed for her. A simple prayer. Put my hands on her. 
Say, Lord, show your power. Heal this woman. I went home. I got me some pasta. <laughs> because my faith is crazy. And this is what I'm trying to teach you. God is looking for radical Christians. Yes. Go get your degree. If God give it to you, go get it. He have wisdom. My people parents got a lack of wisdom. Turn off that fake phone. Prepay. You want to help? You got to prepay. So, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm crazy. I'm like Nikki. Nikki's crazy. Nikki is still put it on your 81. He's still a gang member. He's a gang member for Jesus. Uh, that's right. Nikki, Nikki Cruz is a bomb, brother. Nikki Cruz, brother. I know he's talking Spanish and English, but his anointing will put a lot of people on. I'll put every person on shame. Nikki has a, an anointing upon his life that is incredible. And it's crazy. It's on steroids, his anointing. Right. Nicky will preach something, you don't know what he's saying, but when the anointing hits, it's over. The devil knows Nicky's name. Do he know your name? Or he just passing you by and saying, I don't know you, I'm not afraid of you. And I came back a year later, and the person that's waiting for me at the door was that woman. And I said, and she said, You remember me? I said, No, I don't. She said, I was supposed to die six months ago, I'm here. And I was like, why does the prayer work? <laughs> what happened? She said, I went back to the doctors, and they told me, lady, come to your senses, you're going to die, get out. She said, test me one more time. Ooh, Jesus. Then you find out you want trace. Because when God cleans you up, when he cleans you up, there's no evidence. There's no evidence when he cleans you up. I want to give you a small teaching, just a small teaching. Check this out, small teaching. Just want to give it to you. I, I, I want to give you a small teaching. The devil is, it, it, it is, it is the devil's playbook. The devil's playbook against the church. The devil's playbook against the church. The devil understand two things that are coming into fruition. The last two things that are coming into fruition, the devil is setting you up today. He's setting you up now, so he can have you tomorrow. See, the devil don't have to get you today. He can set you up today to get you tomorrow. It's like playing chess. You don't have to grab, you don't have to kill the king right away. All you have to do is set it up so you can get him, hit him hard later. Come on, sir. See, the devil got strategies. He has a plan. He has a plot for your life. Jesus has a plan. Which one you on? Because you see, the devil understand. Even even in the book, even in the even in the gospels, when Jesus came off the boat, that the man was stuck in the tomb. Mark chapter five, he was stuck in the tomb. And the man, it, it's funny how the man cursed something in the spirit and ran from the from a place to that place to a place that was had life. He ran and fell on the feet. And this is what the devil understands. The demons understand. The principality, territory demon, familiar spirit, understand. They fell onto his feet. And the first thing the demon said, why are you here? It's not time yet. <laughs> and the disciples, the little rascal, they didn't know what to say. What did he say? Okay. The devil knew theology. He said, it's too early for you to get here and torment us. Because they understand there's a time. There's a time, a season, and a plot right. Right. against the church. And the devil understand that he will send out the light of us. And the church is sleeping in her lap. That's right. That's right. I know people don't like me saying that. That's okay. I'm just bringing the mail from heaven. See, when I signed up, I said, I was faithful to the court to the devil. I was faithful to the court. I sat with the devil face to face. I talked to the devil. He breathed on me, and I breathed on him. That's how close I sat with him. So I was faithful to the court. This whole, this whole witchcraft stuff that people got, oh, I got saved from witchcraft. No, you didn't. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> it, 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 I, when I got an 
initiated, when I got initiated at the age of seven and a half years old, there was a necklace that fell from the second heaven. I was chosen by the demons from the second heaven. The, the necklace fell. It was. It had the seven colors on it. I mean, the seven powers of the dark side. The seven powers to the dark side. There's 21 rows to the dark side. I understand the language. There's another thing that's coming to the church that is hitting the church from, a, from it's, it's like a storm. Hitting, it's hitting the church from a rising. They call chemical spiritual warfare. The devil is bringing upon the churches, the mega churches, and they're falling asleep. They're falling asleep. And now pathetic thing going on. And now they're, they're preaching the fake Jesus. And it's bringing, he's bringing that spew over the church. All principality. There's a principality over every demonic church. Ever every demonic church. When I mean demonic church, churches that are made, there's no wrong with a mega church because Peter had his first mega church. He preached 3,000 people to the kingdom, but he had the right intentions. Yeah. 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 The devil is spewing this thing over these churches because the devil told me, John, you remember when you used to actually pray? I said, look, but I don't want to do that anymore. He said, I know you don't. He said, but remember you, what was the reason you did it? He said, because if I can curse the region, I can curse the people. So the devil is doing now. The devil is flying over the churches, grieving on them, because if he can curse the leadership, he can curse the church, he can own the people. And this is the situation. This is the, this is, this is the test in the end. That they're going to use those people against us, the remnant. Because you're going to say, well, they don't preach hate. They don't preach against homosexuality. They're Christians like you. They use those devils against the remnant. It is a plan, it's a scheme of the enemy. That's the difference between the, the sheep and the goats. And they're going to use the goats against us. You preach your hate. They are the, they're wearing the same uniform, they're wearing the same clothes, like in the 10 virgins. Fifty percent stood behind. Fifty yeah. percent of the church stood behind. Amen. Because they didn't have that holy of holy moment with Jesus. So you can go through something. You can fall asleep for a season. You can yeah. go. You can go through trial and testing, and it can put you in a place of lethargic sleep. But there's something in you. There's substance. There's something in you, like the term virgin. There was something still that when they woke up, they understood that the bridegroom was right there. Amen. And the other one, they, 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 they knew, but they didn't understand it. That's why they said, we get some of what you got. See, I can't give you what I got. That whole, the whole situation about me giving you my anointing, it's not even mine. I can't give it to you. So the whole hot wash on TV, that come and give me a thousand dollars, I say, my anointing, that's bull crap. Let me keep my thousand here, baby. No, I can get my anointing for free. Or you know what I have to do? Bend my knees fast and seek the faith. Not his hand. There's a change in the spirit around. There's, there's a change in, 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 in the guards of who you are and who you are now. He's coming out of metamorphosis. He's coming out of this other shell. Because David Wilkinson was called at the age of 70 to give to preach all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To pastors. In stadiums. Right. And he used to call it a cup of cold water. Because the pastor was worried. They was tired. They wanted to quit the ministry. They wanted to give up and close their churches. And God said, to 70 years old, you go preach to them. Three at times for a church. You give it to Pastor Carter. You go preach. And he preached Amen. from 70 to 79. He preached all these pastors. And then this is the thing you need to catch, okay? Don't, uh, I, you hear these Joshua Mills and these idiots saying that they got the glory. And these uh, Max Soldiers, they carry the glory. Bullcrap, huh? See, people are laughing at the glory. That's okay. Jesus. All right, if I tell you this is the bridge had broken over there, then you 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 turn around and you don't go that way. Let me tell you, because the truth be told, when David Wilkinson will come into the stadium and the glory falls down, 18,000 people fell out. Oh, 18,000 people fell out, weeping and wailing, and I hope that happened in the stadium here when the 